Hey everybody, what's going on? I guess today's a better day than it was last week. I was having, well I had been having trouble sleeping because August is a miserable month in New Jersey. It gets so humid that the sweat um, doesn't even evaporate off of your skin half the time. So you're, you're basically brazing in your own sweat when you're outside. Uh, it's I'm sure it's worse in places like Florida, you know, down south of the East Coast and everything. And but it's like a rainforest around here, a really hot miserable rainforest and we do have air conditioning so that's good at least um but I don't have air conditioning in my room and it makes it hard to sleep so I kind of have to sleep in shifts which can really mess her day up when you're just dealing with ordinary arbitrary things in life let alone when let alone that you know when you have a kid but anyway I wanted to talk about uh, why I personally am so strongly against Autism Speaks now and why I think it's important to boycott it I used to be for this organization and unfortunately my daughter's school deals with them and does participates in I guess let it let it a blue day every year which I don't really like but um it's not something that I'm willing to really go to battle with them over. I'd rather just do my own thing and find ways to raise money directly for the school instead of wasting money giving it to Autism Speaks because I had not known what damage they were doing with how they perceive autistics until the infamous incredibly offensive call to action that was written by one of the founders and it just floored me with how much hate and vitriol that was permeated with it and I had already had a problem with the fact that they kept insisting on pushing the anti-vaccine thing that vaccines cause autism and when it was without a doubt scientifically proven that they don't anymore at least I know at one point a certain component in um, certain vaccines I don't have any of the research with me right now because I have to do these um, episodes in a separate room so that I don't have any background noise interruption I don't have my laptop with me but I will put links in the description certain vaccines I can understand if you're against certain maybe flu vaccines because honestly I don't really need them I've gotten without the flu vaccine I've gotten the flu maybe once in 10 years And 
I'm a big, I'm big with the uh, Lysol spray on all of the places that bacteria tends to fester and, you know, just, I do use germ gel. Not all the time, but when cold and flu season is around and you have a little kid and you get to the point where, you know, the bus driver and teacher are saying that there's practically an epidemic going around the school. I know epidemic sounds dramatic, but it feels like an epidemic when you're dealing with it and your kid brings it home and gives it to everybody in the house. But once your child reach a cert- reaches a certain age, and once you yourself are at a certain age, you don't. It's your right to not have a flu vaccine. If it's a situation where you know you're going to college, it makes sense to take to get the meningitis vaccine because of how fast and devastating an outbreak of that would be. There's certain things that we need, there's, there's certain viruses that we need to keep under control. And inoculations and vaccines are here for a reason. In certain third world countries where there's no proper sewage systems at all and there's no clean drinking water, vaccines are imperative and when you live in a first world country it's very easy to let yourself think that you live in a bubble and you get used to not having to worry about these things because of course unless you live in Flint, Michigan but for the most part you know, America, where I live in, we have the sewage systems, we have the clean drinking water. And it's what what we deal with is still nothing compared to certain other countries. And so what happens is that infants who are protected by their mother's immune system for the first six months of their life, get inoculations, get vaccines, and they have to get so many at once, and so many at such a young time, that they do run a higher risk of death. In countries where we don't have to worry about such sanitation issues, it's different. And to say people should not get, that children should not get inoculations or vaccinations until green inoculations and green vaccines are invented and mass produced is incredibly irresponsible. And... I just think, especially with an, an, organiza- an organization like Autism Speaks, that is there for the money. Most of the money goes to the CEO and towards people's paychecks. Very little of it actually goes to research. And the majority of them is advertising, is salary and advertising. That's what they're about. So for them to go on that kind of campaign and to top it all off, write that disgusting call to action that they did it was just 
pretty much the last straw for me. It's their fault that, you know, people think it's okay to use autism as an insult. This world isn't built for neurodivergence, is the bottom line. It's built for neurotypicals. And the thing that I find funny is that I've mentioned this on my Twitter before, but people with ADHD are neurodivergent too. And yet you don't see, I don't have to go through YouTube comments, Twitter posts, Facebook posts and see like, oh, the autism is strong in this one. What are you, autistic? I don't mean this as an insult, but I think they might be autistic because they don't understand my joke. What? It, what? Like, do you ever do you ever hear? I don't mean to be rude, but I think they have ADHD because they didn't. You know what I mean? It doesn't. It doesn't compute with me. And that isn't me trying to take away your freedom of speech. It's not about that. I actually have. <laughs> quite an offensive sense of humor and I'm never going to be popular my YouTube channel is never going to be popular and I'm fine with that you will never hear me bitch about how I can't get enough subscribers or I don't have as many subscribers as other people or I'm one of those smaller YouTubers who can't get a break. I know why I can't get a break. I'm not willing to do what I know I need to do to be a bigger YouTuber. And I've accepted that. I'm not going to pull a Trigly puff on you if I hear you were say the word autistic as an insult or if you say the word retard because personally I choose how I respond to that sort of thing you don't get to tell me how I should react because the bottom line is I had a baby, not a lobotomy. I'm still the same person I was before I had a kid. I had always planned on having at least one. I always wanted a daughter. I have a daughter now and she fits As seamlessly as a kid can fit. Sure, the autism was unexpected, but when you have a kid, you run the risk of them having a birth defect. Your kid could be born without an eardrum. Your kid could be born with a heart outside of their chest. There are worse things my kid could have been born with than autism. And I thank God every day that that's the worst that happened because of the fact that I as I mentioned earlier I had a miscarriage before her a miscarriage would have been the worst thing that could have happened not autism so with that I think I'm gonna end this and I know this is very rambly and incoherent compared to last time, but the last time I sounded depressed, and I I wasn't depressed. I was exhausted. My uh, battery was at about two percent when I made that recording, 
So with that, I am going to try to record next week. Um, vacation is coming up. So I don't know how that's going to work. I might have to skip a week. I might have to just record something on the sly at a different time and schedule it. But we'll see. So if you made it through, thank you. I appreciate it. And I hope to see you next time. Uh, Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And thanks for listening.